What's up guys? Today I'm gonna to make a video on something that everyone struggles with pretty much all the time. FOMO. How's it going? I'm Justin. Justin Khan from Justin.tv. Everybody has FOMO, especially in modern society where we're all on social media all the time. You're on Instagram and Snapchat. You're seeing what everyone else is doing. They're always up to cool shit. And at least that's what it seems like because their people always post all the coolest shit they're doing on their social media. FOMO is a prevalent, it's a plague. It's a societal plague that affects uh, even the best of us. As for myself, I spent most of my life primarily driven by FOMO. It kinda sucks to admit that, but like, you know, here I am. I can admit it. And this was, this manifested in very small things all the way through very big things. It was everything from when I was working on my startup, I would log on Facebook and see that all these people were out partying or doing vacations or you know my friends from college were going and living their lives they were like actually having fun and i was sitting in a dark room working on programming something and i was like oh my god i'm you know missing out i'm wasting my life like these people are all having doing great like did i make the wrong career decision my startup's not going anywhere i've had fomo on the financial side where it's like I had friends who have made investments in companies uh and I didn't invest. A bunch of my friends invested in Dropbox uh, in the very beginning. We knew the founders and uh, I didn't think to invest. And then, you know, obviously I, that company's worth a lot of money now. So, you know, and that happens, if you're in Silicon Valley long enough, that happens over and over and over again. You know, the number of companies that I didn't invest in that are unicorn companies or decacorn companies is probably 10 times the companies that I did invest in. Now, you know, you don't have to even just be in Silicon Valley for that to affect you because everyone can YOLO, you know, crypto, shit coins or meme stonks and uh, has a friend who's, you know, probably independently wealthy now. Uh, he's like 22 and quit their job because they're so good at it. And they're like, why didn't I do that? I could have put my life savings in Shiba Inu coin too. Like that would have been a good financial decision. Side note, don't do it. You know, so now everybody's feeling this like financial FOMO from what they didn't invest in. For me, it extended all the way to career FOMO. There's probably people out there that I knew 10 or 15 years ago who are like, man, that Justin guy's like, that guy was just some guy. I could have like, started Twitch, which, you know, they probably could have in the right place at the right time. But I'm also looking, like after we sold Twitch, I was looking at my friends who started like Airbnb and Dropbox and thinking to myself, man, I really could have made it in a lot different way. I should have kept going, I, you know, and, and having all this FOMO about not being a founder of a public company. So the point is it never ends. There's endless things to FOMO about, no matter who you are, where you are, what you're doing, it's endless. So you have FOMO, how do you deal with it? Well, here are the things that work for me. I don't know if they're gonna work for you, but maybe they will. Number one is just name it. Name it to yourself or talk to other people about it and say, hey, I have FOMO right now. I'm experiencing this fear of missing out or feeling that I did miss out or guilt that I didn't do something in the past that would be benefiting me now. And know that it's okay to feel that way. It's emotions are an evolved human trait that helped us survive and exist in society, right? And so some fear of missing out is probably healthy because it's part of what has driven us in the past to go accomplish more things or do more things that were to our benefit. Now, of course, that's been amplified by social media and society like way beyond its usefulness. So we should also know that part. But having a fear of missing out is natural and not the end of the world. It's part of the human condition. All right, guys, quick commercial break. Today, my video is brought to you by Magic Mind. Magic Mind is a energy shot that you take in the morning alongside or in replacement of your morning coffee. And it gives you consistent, clean energy throughout the day. If you're an entrepreneur or a creative in need of that mental boost, then Magic Mind's for you. It's something I take every day. In fact, I love it so much that I invested in the company. My friend James started this company a couple of years ago to solve his own problem, and he's really built a product I think is incredible. If you want to try Magic Mind out, you can get 20% off with my discount code Justin20 at MagicMind.co. I really like Magic Mind because it gives me great energy throughout the day. It's filled with adaptogens and nootropics that help you focus and make you relax and taste great. Once again, if you want to try it out, go to magicmind.co and enter the code JUSTIN20. I'll link it in the description below. Thanks. Number two, something I do is I think about all the times that I ever got something I wanted, whether it was getting a new job or selling my company or even just buying something you know, that I really wanted. And I think about what did that feel like? I visualize the feeling of getting it and then remember what happened afterwards. That part is often hard because, you know, we don't often think about, okay, okay, what was the 
impact of this afterwards. Inevitably, what always happens afterwards, after you get something that you really, really want, is you might have a temporary blip of joy. It might be five minutes, it might be five days, no matter what you get in the external world, you will always go back to your baseline. And so remembering that, just remembering, hey, I sold my company for this, or I got this much in my bank account, and then I hit my goal, then what happened? Life continued, it was fine, like everything, you know, was good, it was fine, but it wasn't changed, I wasn't permanently better off, you know, I wasn't permanently happier. The mental benefits of everything you get in the outside world is fleeting. So remembering that is helpful, because when you think about the next thing you're trying to get, the next thing you're pursuing, it always helps to go back to that memory of, well, when you got something, what was that real effect? And then understanding, oh, it's not really gonna change my life. Another thing I do, which I talk a lot about, gratitude journal. Instead of focusing on what you don't have, focusing on what you do have and all the things to be grateful for is a great practice to help you be happy with what you have because you have a lot. If you're watching this video, you're probably doing it on your phone or your computer, which 20 years ago you probably wouldn't have even been able to do. I guarantee you if you're watching this, you have a lot. So what I do is I use an app called Five Minute Journal. Every day I write down three things in the morning that I'm grateful for. It could be small things, it could be big things. Sometimes it's, you know, I'm grateful for, that I'm healthy. Other times it's, I'm grateful that I've got a cup of coffee in the morning. You know, and so by focusing on what you're grateful for, you're guaranteed to be happier every day. Another thing that's helped is to invest in my relationships with other people. Stuff in the external world, whether it's more money, accolades, you know, fancy trips, those have never created lasting happiness. But what has is really having deeper connections with the people around me, and that doesn't cost anything. You don't have to go anywhere to find it. You just, it's the people in your life. Really investing in being vulnerable, opening up, having real deep conversations and connection with them has, is something that, you know, I always thought I would get through having a lot of stuff and accomplishments in the external world. And instead I realized I could skip to the end directly and just focus on my relationships with others. And that was huge for making me happy and content in my life. And then lastly, no one likes to hear this, but meditation. Meditation helped me disconnect stimulus from action. So before stimulus was like some sort of feeling of missing out or seeing my friend on some fancy trip on Instagram or whatever. And then the reaction was like rumination. It was like, oh my God, I'm like not doing things right. I could be doing better. I should be like going on these trips or whatever it was. Through practicing meditation, stimulus comes in. Oh, I see this, you know, fancy trip on Instagram. And then, you know, there's like a slight pause. And then maybe there's some response. The response is like some thought, but it's disconnected from my identity. So I'm not fully swept along with it. If you invest in meditation enough, I promise you it's gonna benefit you in terms of creating that gap between stimulus and response. And you're gonna be much more content and peaceful in your life no matter what is happening in the outside world. All right, that was the video. I hope it's helpful for you. If you're struggling with FOMO, let us know what you're FOMOing below. Post in the comments your hot, you know, meme coin tips. I will uh, see you guys next time and make sure to smash that like button and subscribe and turn on video notifications. You know what to do. See you guys next time. Boom. FOMO. <laughs>